This country talks a lot about terrorist attacks, and rightly so. Almost uh, anybody in America can give you some kind of a listing of the uh, the most uh, destructive acts of terror that have happened in our country. But let me suggest to you this. The two greatest attacks of terror on America were perpetrated by the Supreme Court, not by any Muslim, but by the Supreme Court of the United States. The first one was the legalizing of abortion. Subsequent to that, there have been millions of babies slaughtered in the wombs of their mothers. It's incalculable to even comprehend that. The, the, the blood of those lives cries out from the ground for divine vengeance on this nation. The second great act of terror perpetrated by the Supreme Court was the legalization of same-sex marriage. The destruction of human life in the womb, in a sense the destruction of motherhood, and now the destruction of the family itself. No bomb, no explosion, no attack and no assault on people physically can come anywhere near that kind of terrorism. Our country is being terrorized by the people most responsible to protect it, those who are to uphold the law. Just a few comments beyond that. No human court has the authority to redefine morality. But this human court has said murder is not murder, and marriage is not marriage, and family is not family. They have usurped the authority that belongs only to God, who is the creator of life, marriage, and family. Any and all attempts to define morality differently than God has is a form of rebellion and blasphemy. Blasphemy against God, against His holy nature and His holy law and His holy people. This nation at its highest level has taken a position against God. Such blasphemous rebellion is energized. It is energized by the corruption of the collection of sinful hearts that make up this nation or any nation. There's no question about that. But behind that collection of sinful, corrupt human hearts that make this kind of thing possible and acceptable is the realm of Satan and demons. The Bible says Satan holds the whole world in his hand. The whole world lies in the lap of the evil one. God and Christ and the Holy Spirit and the Bible and the church and truth are the enemies of Satan. And Satan rules the world. He rules the world of sinners. And he has his power in high places. He is the ruler of the kingdom of darkness, and he hates and seeks to destroy all that is light, all that is truth, all that is pure, all that is holy, all that is virtuous, and all that is good. Get ready, folks. The reprobate mind has now reached the highest levels. And that level will demand the reprobate mind everywhere else. And where that mind dominates, the end of Romans 1, where there is a depraved mind, then everything that's improper begins to happen. All unrighteousness, wickedness, greed, evil, envy, murder, strife, deceit, malice, gossip, slander, haters of God, insolent, arrogant, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, without understanding, untrustworthy, unloving, unmerciful. And though they know the ordinance of God that those who practice such things are worthy of death, they not only do the same, but they give hearty approval to those who practice them. There isn't a judge, there isn't a sitting judge on the Supreme Court who doesn't know what the Bible says about homosexuality, but they affirm it anyway. That's the reprobate mind. 
and it's now going to dominate our society. So we as Christians are the minority, but we have always been the minority. We, we've just had a reprieve in our little piece of human history. We, we are defined in, in, the, in the, the wonderful inspired words of Peter as a separate people, as a holy nation. Christ is our King. Scripture is our law. And in ways that have not been true in the past, Scripture and the laws of our country now collide head on. Head on. And we're going to feel it. At the seminary, we put an article up on the seminary website about homosexuality. Within a matter of hours, we received a letter ordering us to cease and desist immediately or face a very severe lawsuit. Could we be sued for taking this position? Absolutely. Insurance companies that provide liability insurances for churches so that we're protected against lawsuits are beginning to say, we will not accept responsibility for lawsuits on homosexual or same-sex marriage issues. The church is out there all on its own. Practical atheism, rejection of the truth, moral relativism has always prevailed in Satan's kingdom. But here in America, we've been, we've been protected from that in its full fierceness. No more. And by the way, religious liberty isn't promised to Christians, is it? Freedom isn't promised to Christians. Persecution is. Persecution is. I think we're going to feel it. We don't bow down to Caesar. We bow to our King. No matter how bad it gets, Jesus is coming. Lord Jesus, now at the right hand of the Father, exalted as the sovereign Lord of the church and faithful high priest interceding for His people, shall be revealed. The Lord Jesus shall be revealed. The apocalypsis, the unveiling, the, the appearing of Jesus. Sometimes the Apostle Paul uses parousia, which means presence. Here he uses apocalypsis, which means the unveiling of something that is hidden. Jesus, who is, as far as the world is concerned, hidden, will be unveiled. At His coming, the book of Revelation says that people are going to cry for the rocks and the mountains to fall on them, to hide them from the face of His blazing glory. Here and in 1 Corinthians 1, 7, Paul uses that word apocalypsis, the revelation, the unveiling. And this is the unveiling to those who do not know Him. Verse 7 says, He will be revealed from heaven with His mighty angels. With His mighty angels. 